Hello everyone and welcome to Did You Know Hearthstone. Today we're going to be talking about card nostalgia with the legacy set for Mage. Now this is going to be going over a lot of the old Mage cards from Classic Era series. Going from anywhere from between the Alpha phase and all the changes that have occurred since then to current meta. If you guys like the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe and also let me know in the comments below which cards you think were the craziest in terms of the changes. Okay, so starting us off, Mirror Image. Now, Mirror Image, very simple change, but it's a good one to start us off with. A, a terrible card. It doesn't see play and, you know, probably would never see play again. Uh, but it actually used to be worse. Back in the beta, it actually used to be 0-1s instead of 0-2s. So imagine those zero ones you summoned for one mana and they just get pinged off or just dealt a random one damage and they're basically useless. They're more useless than they ever been. And needless to say the change was necessary. Still is a bad card though. I'm kind of curious to see if they would ever bring it back and maybe revise it just a little bit. Next up we have Arcane Explosion. Now it's kind of funny because in beta phase series uh, the Arcane Explosion actually used to deal one damage to all enemies. It used to be practically like a mini consecration. Back then, obviously, considering everything that's going on is too strong of an effect. But now that we look at it, you know, an effect like this, we've seen on like a one mana effect with lifesteal. So it's kind of crazy to see all the changes from the pre-alpha phase, pre-beta phase, where they made of the time was assumed too strong but now is like nothing in comparison and then we have frostbolt frostbolt used to be a bit weaker it used to be from three mana and then they buffed it to two when they released it into the current phase of classic and this is the frostbolt we know and love and so maybe some people hate but it's pretty good i can't imagine it being played at three i think they definitely overvalued some damage cards and we'll see that here as we go further Speaking of more freeze effects though, Frost Nova, if anyone doesn't know, is a crazy card for Mage. It was most powerful and actually probably one of the strongest cards and if brought back into the core set, would still be one of the strongest cards from the Legacy set. And that's just the freeze of all minions. What's crazy is that it costs 3 mana, it was very cheap to do. Blizzard, people would choose this over Blizzard because you didn't really care for the extra 2 damage. You really cared for the mass freeze. And well, back in the beta phase, it actually used to cost 2 mana. So if you think it's crazy now and you could see it being played, imagine it being at 2 mana. And then we have Blizzard. This is kind of interesting because Blizzard is currently in the core set and it isn't played. It, very rarely is it ever played or maybe discovered and then you're happy to play it. But because it, at the time, when you're looking at it, doesn't really seem too worthy. And it used to be, in the beta phase, 5 mana. And I can actually see this being played in current core set with a 5 mana tax. Sure, it is those annoying freeze effects. But when you're considering it as a costly freeze, this is probably one exception that I would deem necessary and worthy for, for that type of effect. We have Fireball here. Fireball is... At from 5 mana to 4 mana, again, they kind of overshot the damage aspects. So they thought damage was a lot more. And I mean, of course, you know, right? 5 mana to deal 6. I cannot m imagine that being the standard norm for how minions are judged off of their effects and everything. This kind of like is a huge indicator of like where their play set and balance is even to this day. So it's, it's a very good card now and... I, I, I can imagine, you know, changes like this are just little tweaks for the damage. Ice Barrier, with the whole aspect, had a small, simple change, but it's something I actually wanted to discuss. The previous, or the current one we know, is on the right, when your hero is attacked, gain 8 armor. That's obvious. Uh, but it used to be in the Classic series, way, way back when, as, as soon as your hero is attacked, gain 8 armor. And that got me thinking that imagine if we had a, this as our main standard of a whenever your heroes are attacked or whenever this minion does something, you know, just imagine it being every minion has as soon as. I, I can't imagine it kind of rolling off the tongue as best as the whenever or when. So, you know, if you had like 
whenever this minion attacks restore five health you know like would be weird to say is as soon as your minion attacks or as soon as this minion attacks it's just a weird roundabout way of keywording which i'm glad they kind of got rid of and no other card exists that does this vaporize uh was a very different card way back in the alpha phase uh, we all know it whenever a minion attacks your hero destroy it but it used to be whenever your opponent plays a minion destroy it which is a much stronger effect and in my opinion i would love to see if they would actually change it to something like this and it might be seen as playable because currently even in any type of secret mage i don't think they have favored vaporize as one of the options and although secret mage can get quite annoying giving them different options and versatility is kind of nice and especially in discover options opens up a lot more uses for it counterspell used to be very slightly different i'm kind of curious as to what their mentality was on this but back in the old classic series before they made all the changes when an opponent cast a spell counter it and then now they changed it sometime i think in nax ramus uh, or, or nomorgan where it's when your opponent casts a spell counter it and it's kind of questionable because it's like when an opponent does that mean that there was maybe discussion or early phases talks of like multiple heroes being played and you can play against a free-for-all type play or maybe they just didn't want to clarify that that is what their case is doing so they just clarified it with when your opponent casts a spell very interesting i don't think it's like too big again this is more wording spence but when we look at the wording it's kind of like where was their mindset into really changing this card here in tour mage is it's from a three mana three three back in the alpha phase obviously that's kind of weak in terms of uh play style so they actually did buff it uh, into what we know from in the classic era which is a three mana four three very simple change it's uh absolutely necessary now, Archmage Antonitis. Now, this doesn't seem like a lot, okay? I didn't really include it because it is another wording that they change from whenever you cast a spell, put a fireball spell into your hand, as opposed to add a fireball spell to your hand. And, well, that got me thinking, you know, back then they were on the right track in terms of using it because... Like, I just imagine these kind of wordings and, and then using the get keyword whenever you cast a spell, get a fireball spell. That would fit in two lines and it would be a two line legendary. Uh, rather interesting to see that they have shortened it uh, a little bit further uh, to what we know now. And I, I can imagine if Antonidas got a, like a rewording, it would definitely be that aspect and it would fit quite well in this sense. I went over a whole video basically discussing how Blizzard Hearthstone is basically trying to get rid of the ad effect or the ad wording and, and replacing it wherever they can with a get wording because they can simply shorten the wording a little better while also kind of getting around to the same point. It's an interesting video. If you guys haven't seen it, I'll be linking it up above somewhere up top here. Uh, but let's get on to the next cards. Okay, the next cards is the whole aspect of water elemental and something interesting is that the freeze effects so i mean for one let's just look at it freeze any character that water elemental damages it actually specified the exact minion and another thing is when an interaction is that freeze effects didn't used to freeze armored heroes so you would actually be able to hit let's say a warrior and if they had armor and it didn't knock off and you didn't do excess damage they wouldn't get frozen which is kind of crazy to, to think about now you may also be wondering why the name duke hydraxis is up there like what is that well this is kind of a little bit more of a wow knowledge than hearthstone knowledge of classic era but it is a design sense, and they actually designed the water elemental off of a specific water elemental, Duke Hydraxis, and then they put him into Hearthstone, but they just called him water elemental. So it's kind of funny to see and to consider that, you know, there's this guy up here that who knows where in, in WoW that's inspired all of Hearthstone, where even to this day we're getting water elementals. So uh, it's, it's just interesting to see. Good note on how that is, but of course, those are the changes for the... Smaller changes. We'll get on to the next changes that are a bit more 
up the pace. So we have arcane missiles. Again, this is more of a wording sense from shoot three missiles at random enemies for one damage each. Deal three damage randomly split among enemy characters. I believe that was around for uh, quite a while until they decided to finally reword it into its final stage. Deal three damage randomly split among all enemies. Gets around to the same point. I guess it does shorten it. But if they were wanting to implement it, which they have for the last bits, probably does save on the space of wording that they have left. I mean, it's, it saves a word, so... Okay, and then Cone of Cold. Cone of Cold is kind of interesting, because if you guys haven't known, uh, Cone of Cold was 3 mana. It was in the same play as the Frost Nova, but obviously is a much weaker effect in some aspects, right? It frees a minion next, and the minions next to it, and then it deals 1 damage to them. So clearly, by looking at Cone of Cold and Frost Nova, you'd be like, well, I'd rather have Frost Nova because it does it to all minions. And we already discussed, it doesn't matter if you're dealing damage to minions. All, all that matters is you're freezing as many minions in, in, in the board state. Well, Blizzard has decided somewhere, I believe, like around the Barons era, that they didn't want to include freeze effects and they wanted to make it more rarity. And so they took out Frost Nova. I believe they took out Blizzard, but they for sure took out Cone of Cold along with it. By taking out for Cone of Cold, they left it in, but they did nerf it to a four mana aspect. So it was basically just an already weak card that really didn't see too much play into a absolutely dead card that stayed dead for the entire year of that change that they kind of wanted to mindset until they finally phased it out of that core set and then brought it to wild and then they just reverted the nerf will this card be good if you know it was at three mana again and back in the core set i don't think so as a matter of fact i thought it was one of the weaker effects and we actually have some cards that are you know freezing two minions dealing two three damage to a thing so it there there is like already cards that do this for cheaper mana and more effective so I, I, I think it, it was an absurd change that they did for this be, simply for the sake of trying to keep in a class identity that they didn't want to basically disrupt on. Mirror Entity used to be different, different in certain ways that Mirror Entity used to be whenever an enemy minion attacks from a copy of it. So you could just imagine, I don't know, a charge minion or a rush minion when a minion attacks, summon that copy and it's activated instantly and interesting to note it is win which i think again when they changed it to when your opponent plays a minion i'm gonna copy of it i think they changed it to the what we know now as after your opponent plays a minion simply because if your opponent plays like a taunt minion or something maybe there's some interaction or, or something like that i'm not entirely too sure why they would do that but there there is a specific case use of using win as opposed to after and there's like different phases of the effects that go off again more wording but it's interesting to see that this effect uh, would be kind of nice and, and a little bit different if we actually had a spell that's similar to that flame strike flame strike has gone through different phases and of course we all know the uh, normal flame strike deal for damage to all minions all enemy minions but we don't know or maybe you don't know that in the alpha phase it used to actually damage all enemies so imagine it as like a, a mega consecration and that's what it used to do and clearly at the time would have been too strong would it be strong now probably would it'd be a little bit too aggressive you know and i i personally think them limiting it to any minions is the sole purpose of what it's supposed to do anyway so it was kind of nice that they buffed it and then we now know it seven seven mana deal five damage to all enemy minions okay we have mana worm here and so this is kind of a long one so just bear with me okay so mana worm at its alpha phase the original creation was a one mana zero three and so whenever you cast a spell, gain plus one attack, that effect has never changed throughout the entirety of the uh, minion existing. What did change is that also within the alpha phase, they said, ah, one mana zero three, it's not really cutting it. We're going to make it a one mana one three. And it was as a one mana one three up into classic and then in future expansions afterwards until I, I want to say somewhere around Rise of Shadows, maybe even a little bit sooner than rise of shadows it was a two mana one three and of course the card never got played 
if I ever played it, I started around Rise of Shadows. It definitely was not playable whenever I got in. But when it went from this two mana one three up here, they decided, you know what? Bring it back around the Baron's time. The one mana one two, go ahead. We can play it. Was never played. Um, and so recently in last year, the Titans expansion, they were like, okay, well, we really want to try and push this. It's a one mana one three. So it took so long, almost 10 years for the the card to come back full circle into what it is. You know, it's kind of incredible to see that this incredible card that was so almighty and powerful actually was at a is now back at a one mana one three and doesn't really see much play. Very interesting to see how powerful cards from way back when actually don't get played anymore. Okay, and then we have Pyroblast. Pyroblast actually used to, in its alpha phase, be an 8 mana deal 9 damage. Honestly, this is a bit odd seeing Pyroblast at 9 damage. I'm so used to the 10 damage aspect, and so that recently within, the, within that beta, they did actually end up changing it to 10 damage, which seems about right. Is it powerful? Yes. And then somewhere between the beta and then, of course, leaking into the classic era, was a 10 mana deal 10 damage which i think is probably where you'd want it and you might think oh eight mana is like totally playable like i can 10 mana power blast nobody's gonna run that but i guarantee you you knock a mana or two off you definitely would play an eight mana power blast and it's not even a question even if for the whatever reason it actually didn't i think from a design standpoint, since this is such a basic card, you want to have the effect as a, a staple. So having an 8 mana deal 10 damage, although it's nice and enticing, it's going to affect all your other minions because now every single minion that does a 10 damage indicator, they're going to value it at a 8 damage or 8 mana effect. And probably is, you know, more valued at a 10 mana effect when we, when we can put that in consideration. And then finally, the most recent change here, Sorcerer's Apprentice, used to be a 2 mana 2-2 two -two in alpha phase. And then for whatever reason, they said it's not enough. We needed a bit more staple, so it's a 2 mana 3-2. It's been like this for so long until the Alterac Valley, where they, I believe, took out the card in the core set, or maybe af shortly after Alterac Valley. And then they put the, a 4 mana 3-2. Uh, it's been like that ever since, until just recently, most recent patch expansion, they said, you know what, screw it. It's still OP, so we're going to make the spells cost one less, but not less than one. Something everyone has been uh, basically asking for since the not less than one effect was an originally created. We've come a long way for Sorcerer's Apprentice, but finally she's back at a 2 mana 3-2. You could do some cool shenanigans, but not crazy enough where it's absolutely breaking. And it feels like a, like a Yu-Gi-Oh game, if anything that's gonna be it for the video everyone thank you so much for watching and if you guys did like the video be sure to leave a like and subscribe and also let me know in the comments what you guys think about the changes i will be doing more of this series so it really does help out if you leave me your inputs on what you wanted to see change or maybe some info that maybe i don't even know that i was looking up but as always thanks so much for watching